week or so, uh, I've been just playing around a lot in the dome, trying to tune some of the settings and things. Uh, whether it's been the guiding, or the apora alignment, the balance and the scope, uh, trying a couple of different filters and all these sorts of things, just trying to see uh, see how things work. And uh, I've also did another couple of uh, impromptu uh, live streams on the moon when it was up the other night and uh, a couple of uh, live stacking events uh, just to see how things were going with the, the software as I've also tried to fix the uh, or improve the uh, Wi-Fi between the dome uh, and the house. So anyway, during one of those test sessions I set up uh, the RASA 11 uh, onto the uh, Andromeda Galaxy M31 and I'd set up a sequence there to do uh, 30, 60 and 120 seconds and this was really just to see uh, how noticeable uh, any guiding issues were uh, over the course of the evening and uh, I'd sequenced the sequence, sequence to sequence so that it would do 130 second, then a 60 second, then a 120 and then go back to the, to the beginning again. So these are all the, the files that uh, I've retained uh, from that uh, setting. And then uh, I took all these images in, uh, into the Fitz Viewer, uh, the ASI Studio Fitz Viewer, and I went through each one of them one by one and basically deleted any uh, that had any noticeable trailing or any large vibration in the, in the mount or anything and uh, just tried to clean up or pick the, the best of the images that I could see by eye. Uh, there's maybe one or two in there still that uh, are, could probably have been removed, but uh, on the whole they didn't look too bad. Now at the time, uh, the sky reading was in the middle of the bottle 5, so you can see on the, the Fitz header here, uh, it was 19.96, and I think it peaked uh, in some of the later files up to 20.1, uh, which is my typical range uh, for imaging. And on this occasion, Using the ASI 2600 uh, one-shot color, uh, I set the gain uh, to zero and the offset to zero as well. So after I took all those images, I loaded all the images into Blink. And you can see I've deselected the top two and you'll see why in a minute. But uh, these are the 120s. Uh, I didn't uh, load the 30s or the 60s into this uh, Blink run because uh, it just flickers too much with the contrast difference. However, these are the 120s and if I play it, you can see that uh, they're all generally pretty stable. Uh, there's not a lot of current colour variation there, which is good. However, the first two there are what's happened after the meridian flip. And you can see the star trailing in there and uh, the galaxy had actually started to drift off. So clearly my uh, guiding hadn't been calibrated for the, the post-meridian flip. So I pretty much had to, to wipe out all the images uh, after the, the Meridian flip. So then I took all the images into Deep Sky Stacker. And uh, the images that went in there, so there was uh, 19 minutes of 30 seconds, so 38 frames. So there was 21 60 second frames and there was 17 uh, two minute frames. And uh, there was no offsets, no darks and no flats and I used the uh, weighted average uh, method for stacking there. So that then produced this raw output. So this is straight from Deep Sky Stacker. And, uh, and then obviously did the usual check on the uh, stretch. And here we can see the one on the left is the standard uh, screen transfer stretch uh, in PixInsight. And then the one on the right is the softer, easy, uh, easy processing suite, uh, soft stretch uh, that we can see here. So you can see there is a bit of a uh, difference in them. Uh, I think I ended up using the standard uh, built-in uh, PixInsight uh, stretch and uh, that's where we then headed off. So from that, uh, I decided to see what other tutorials and things I could find online that I hadn't uh, seen before. And again, on YouTube, I came across another uh, new channel, uh, Astronomy Guides, and they had a workflow in PixInsight for Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, so I pretty much followed that uh, to the letter. Uh, obviously, they're the different set of images, so they all look slightly different, but uh, basically followed their workflow steps the best I could. 
and with the various colour calibrations and gradients and uh, uh, histogram transforms and all these sorts of stuff, I followed that through. And the only real difference was towards the end, uh, I also have the Autoscript uh, tools installed. So I did local enhanced detail and darkness enhanced detail, uh, which just helps to pull out some more of the, the dust lanes, etc. Uh, on the image. So from that, this is what I came up with. And I think this is probably my best attempt so far at Andromeda. Uh, there's still area for improvement. I don't like the background uh, too much. I still have a little bit of uh, a gradient uh, sweeping around here and sweeping up here. Uh, but on the whole, compared to in the past, uh, I think I've done not too badly. And uh, here's all the, the different range masks that I had to use uh, for all the different parts of the, uh, the galaxy uh, as I worked through the tutorial and then as I obviously got towards the end as well uh, just continue to try and fine tweak but you get to the point where you get frustrated with it that it's uh, making things a mess so I decided enough uh, was enough. Alright so there's my uh, latest rendition of uh, the Andromeda Galaxy M31. So on our note, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.